I'm Chris from Tom's Outdoors. Today, I wanna to give you a really quick overview of choosing a sleeping mat. Um, I've got a number of them in front of me. We've got everything from the Thermarest Uber Light through to some of the Cedar Summit Ether Lights. Um, we're gonna discuss R value, why it's important. We're gonna have a little bit of a chat about shape and what to consider when choosing a sleeping mat. So I wanna talk a little bit about R values and why they're important. The R value is an expression which gives you the thermal resistance. Now it's the thermal resistance of transferring hot to cold or cold to hot. What that means in practical terms is, is if you're slept on cold ground and your body's warm, what we don't wanna do is be losing too much heat from one into the other. Now conversely, if it's really hot, it's actually quite handy to have a low R value as far as your sleeping mat goes because that means that the cold earth that you slept on is actually going to be sucking heat out of you so it could help you keep you cool. In winter that's a bad situation so if you slept on the snow or you just slept in a really frosty place you don't want the ground to be sucking any heat out of you so you need a fairly high R value to stop that from happening. For me personally and from experience that seems to happen with a mat around a thermal resistance value or an R value of five. So anything that's a three is a really good mat for summer. It gives you a little bit of resistance and stops you from getting cold off the ground or as cold. But once we get up around that five value, then that five value means that you won't leave a divot in the snow, and that you're going to be amply insulated from the cold. Thermal resistance is really important and manufacturers achieve those values by a number of different methods. Say so the Uberlight by Thermarest is a thermal capture, so it's got a reflective liner in it, so it doesn't have an insulation. What it means is that it packs up really small. Now this is a really great lightweight summer mat. These mats here by um, Expert, they've got a synthetic insulation. So as you blow the mats up, it spreads the insulation and that's how it achieves its thermal resistance value. Okay, there is a down mat here. So this one's actually full of down. Now you're looking at a thermal resistance about eight. This is the highest value one that we've got here in front of us. These Cedar Summit ether lights achieve it by both methods. So there's a little bit of synthetic insulation, but there's also an element of thermal capture as far as reflectiveness goes. Something really important to remember with the R value is it's not a heating value. So it's a, a value as far as the resistance and the transfer from of hot to cold or cold to hot. Some people will talk about these, you know, I want a mat that's really warm. It's not really gonna be warm. What it is, it's just gonna stop you from losing any heat. Don't, don't necessarily make you warmer than anything else. I wanna talk about shape. Because shape's a little bit personal. I've got here, uh, X-Bed Tapered Mummy. So as you can see, it's wider across the shoulders and it's quite narrow in the feet. Now, this is a great shape for saving weight because you're just, you're missing material. So it's going to be the lightest possible shape. A lot of people though, do prefer that rectangular shape so it gives them more space and allows their feet to move around. Now, if you're a side sleeper and your feet do move around a little bit, or even if you sleep on your back and you sleep with your legs, your feet partially apart, then you're gonna have to look towards more of a rectangular shaped mat to give you that space that you need at the foot box. Gonna go through a couple of features of this X-Bed mat. Um, most mats on the market have similar styles or features, so a lot of these are replicated across. So this one's seven centimetres thick. Now, if you wanna get comfortable, you're gonna need to go somewhere like that. Once you lay on your side, it's particularly if you've got a hip, um, you're gonna put quite a lot of pressure on the mat itself. You're gonna need a little bit of height off the ground, um, so just so you don't touch a hip and you're uncomfortable. Now this particular mat, the baffles at the side are slightly larger than the baffles in the centre. That provides you with a little bit of a cradle and that'll keep you from rolling off the side of the mat. I love air mats. This mat here packs up to something that size. It's really hard to beat having something that is comfortable, that you get a good night's sleep, that keeps you 
from getting cold on the ground and still packs up for something that's under 500 grams and about the size of a one litre water bottle. It is just brilliant. If you're looking for a sleeping mat, the first thing to do is consider the environment that you're gonna be sleeping in. If you're gonna be regularly sleeping in cold, frosty weather or even snow, you're gonna to wanna to have a look at any mat set up with an hour value of over five. That's gonna keep you from getting cold from the snow and losing too much heat into the ground. If you're only going light and fast in the summer, then you can look at the other end of the spectrum where you're looking at values that are two or three. Lower R values, typically you will get a more compact, lighter mat, but if you're looking at the mats that have got a bit of a higher thermal resistance, it has to have a little bit more insulation, which means it's gonna be a little bit thicker and typically a little bit heavier. The most important thing though, Apart from having a look at where you're gonna be sleeping and what temperature profile you're gonna be sleeping in, is the shape, and it's the comfort. Some people will get away with the tapered mummy shape, other people will really prefer that rectangular shape with a larger foot section. Choose the one that depends on how you sleep and you need a comfortable night's sleep. After all, when we're hiking, you might be on your feet on the move for 14 hours for the day, but you're going to be lay on your side or on your back for eight. So that sleep is critical in recovering and being able to enjoy that next day.